Hello, welcome to the SAE Report. I'm Jessica Ellison. And I'm Chelsea Spurlock. And we have with us today Mr. Gerald Plumley, who is an instructor of management here at SAU. And Mr. Plumley, we understand that you just took a group of students on a business trip to Mexico. What was the purpose of the trip? Yes, um, the purpose of the trip was part of a class called International Studies and Field Experience, in which the students I learn about international business, study Mexico, and then we actually spend about a week in Mexico visiting businesses, uh, experiencing the culture, uh, listening to lectures from professionals down there, uh, meeting some students at a university. Mm. Okay. And uh, how important is it to understand international business for those of us who are business majors at SAU? Understanding international business is, is increasingly important since we live in a global society. Chances are people today will work for companies that uh, buy products, sell products, or have divisions of their companies in, in other countries. They may be traveling to other countries for part of their job, or they may have employees or co-workers from other countries. And uh, learning how to, how to work with and communicate with people from other cultures and how business is done in other countries and the differences, it's, it's very important for anyone in business. Mm -hmm. What type of businesses did you visit while you were in Mexico? Uh, several of the businesses that we visited were manufacturing mm -hmm. facilities, which um, if, you, if you take a tour of a company, um, it, it's hard to see services you know, on a tour. So the types of companies that, that we visit are manufacturing facilities. Mm -hmm. We visited um, a company called Sanchez and Martin, which is mm -hmm. a soap manufacturer, mm -hmm. and they manufacture um, uh, bar soap and laundry detergent and household cleaning products. Mm -hmm. We visit a company called Bimbo, which is the largest. <laughs> yes, the, the name is funny and we always joke about that, but it, it doesn't mean the same thing in, in Mexico yeah. as it does in the U.S. Mm -hmm. uh, it's the largest bakery in Mexico. Uh -huh. And we saw the facility that manufactures hot dog, hamburger buns, and tortillas. Mm. We also visited Grupo Modelo, which uh, the people would most be familiar with uh, Corona as one of the pro most popular products that they make mm -hmm. and, and a few others. Okay. Is it true that you also get credit for your business degree if you go on this trip? Yes, this is uh, a three hour upper level class called International Studies and Field Experience. Um, international business is a course that's required for management majors mm -hmm. and it's also part of the uh, business core for new students, uh, so for anyone working on a business degree. And this class will substitute for international business, oh, really? or students can take it as an elective. We had several students this year that had already taken international business, and they wanted to take this class in addition. Mm -hmm. So it, um, people uh, have options in their program where they can take you know, two or three of a, a selection of courses, and this is one that they can choose. Mm -hmm. So do you all take this trip? always in the spring of every year? Yes, uh, it is scheduled in the spring. Many years it's scheduled during spring break. This year the university that hosts us from Guadalajara uh, was not able to, for us to come during the week of our spring break, so we actually went uh, at the end of February. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, do you have to be enrolled in any specific classes to be able to go like what is the criteria for people who go? Yes, it's for, it is a senior level class, and so students who take the course must be a junior or senior uh, business major and have completed uh, the business core, which means that they can take any upper level business class. And so that is, that is the only requirement as far as the curriculum goes to enroll in the course. Mm -hmm. And we do understand that to go on a trip outside of the country, it must cost a lot of money so did the school fund this or did you do fundraising how did you come about with the cost actually uh, the students this year uh, are responsible for the entire cost of the trip mm -hmm. they uh, pay the regular tuition for a course mm -hmm. and then the uh, fees that they pay cover the cost associated with the University in Mexico mm -hmm. the hotels the air airfare and international student ID and um, I believe that's uh, that's the expenses. It totals about fourteen hundred to fifteen hundred dollars mm -hmm. uh, per student, and then 
the money that they spend for food mm -hmm. and, and entertainment there they have to take with them. So it, it is a pretty expensive trip. But I will tell you that the students who go, they say it's worth every penny. Mm -hmm. That's good. Um, as far as the businesses go that you visited, like how do they compare to U.S. businesses in terms of safety and cleanliness? That's a good question. One of the things that that is interesting to the students is the differences that we see. Mm -hmm. In Mexico, there's not, um, or at least we don't see it. Um, an agency like OSHA that we have here uh, with so many rules and regulations. And um, last year, for example, uh, we went to a paper uh, a company that manufactures cardboard boxes and containers for, um, you know, boxes and cases and things like that. And um, their machine, one of their machines had malfunctioned and they had these huge rolls of paper um, unrolled onto the onto the concrete and mm -hmm. people just had to walk over it and the students had commented in the United States that would have been a major safety violation. Mm -hmm. um, we'll, we'll find um, catwalks that walk from one area of a facility to another that have a, a, a handrail missing or something and, and you think this is this is very very dangerous mm -hmm. or um, things that we think might be unsafe but it, it seems that they have very few accidents mm -hmm. or what we would think. Mm -hmm. and, uh, exactly how many students went on the trip this year? We had 11 students from SAU. Uh, we go along with students from the University of Arkansas at Little Rock and they had 10 undergraduate students. They also offer this course in their MBA program and so mm -hmm. they had uh, I believe 11 MBA students mm -hmm. and so there were 21 students from UALR, 11 students from here, and three faculty from UALR and myself. So we had a total of 36, if I've done the math correctly, 36 mm -hmm. uh, people from Arkansas were there mm -hmm. for the trip. Okay. Um, what measures are taken to make sure that students are safe the whole entire time on the trip? Is that, it up to them or? That's a very good question and it's something that we take very seriously because um, we are traveling to an, you know, to an unfamiliar area and uh, I, I travel with students Within the United States, we take trips to Chicago or New York, and of course, we're, um, you know, we take safety measures there. But going to another country where some of the laws and and uh, customs are, are different, we have to be very careful. Uh, fortunately, we have hosts from the Universidad de Autónoma de Guadalajara, which is the host university. Mm -hmm. Any of our uh, scheduled functions where we uh, go to lectures, we visit businesses, we have. Um, meals that we eat together. We have hosts from Guadalajara that are there and so they make sure that uh, you know we're well taken care of. And then in our free time we practice the buddy system mm -hmm. and no one goes out alone. We have uh, groups of three people at all times but what, what I find is that the students become great friends and you never find as few as three people doing anything at a time. We'll have seven or ten people going going out so um, we find that it's very safe in a, in a group like that uh, and we're, of course we're told you know what parts of the city that mm -hmm. we should go to and mm -hmm. what parts of the city we should avoid just like any city in, in, you mm -hmm. know in the United States as well. Mm -hmm. Now it seems as if you have the scheduling and everything is consistent whenever you go on a trip you know where to go and who to see and everything. How long have you actually been taking this, these trips though? Has it been two years or what? This trip has existed for at least um, eight or nine years mm -hmm. uh, at SAU with, with the students going. This is only my second second year. Mm -hmm. uh, several years ago when the trip started, we had a, um, a large interest and, and cl the classes would be seven or eight students. Mm -hmm. And then for many years, we actually had uh, only one or two students. I would say for the past five years we've had one or two students from SAU going. And last year for the first time uh, I went on the trip. I was not teaching the class but something happened and the, the professor of the class didn't get to go and I, I went in her place. And I, I saw what a great opportunity it was and what a great experience it was for the students. And so I came back and I, I immediately began promoting the, cl mm. the class and the trip and this year we had 11 students take the class and I believe that's probably the largest group we've ever had from SAU mm -hmm. and um, now I have 11 more people promoting the class and I hope that it continues to be a, a, a good sized group and that we do it for many more years. Mm -hmm.
Okay. What was your most memorable experience on this trip? Oh, wow. <laughs> uh, there's so many experiences. Um, so many funny things happen because mm -hmm. we're shocked at uh, the cultural differences mm -hmm. and, and seeing the students react to it uh, and say that, you know, that wouldn't happen in the United States or I can't, I can't believe that happened. Um, I think my most memorable experience, though, is, is not as much related to being in Mexico as it is um, seeing our students get the experience that they did. Uh, the faculty and the students from the University of Arkansas at Little Rock, um, they commented on the SAU students. I was asked if I had brought our best students, you know, <laughs> if I handpicked them, and I really didn't. Uh, I had a cross-section of our students, and, and we got so many comments from the, from the hosts and from the other students, it, it made me really proud uh, to see how our students represented SAU. Mm -hmm. And as professional as they were, right there with the students from a huge university. And so remembering how, how proud I am of our students, that's, that's the thing that I took away from this trip. Mm -hmm. that's nice. So you definitely believe that students from SAU stack up as far as, you know, business students stack up to the U of A students who also have a great business program at their school? Definitely, definitely. Um, of course, any school has average students, below average students, and exceptional students, but uh, I think we really do have some exceptional students. And one of the, and it's not that, you know, comparing grade points or comparing how much they learn or the, the rigor of the programs. Um, let me tell you a story about, about the students. The students from the UALR, you know, there was 20, 21 of them, I believe. Okay, they didn't know each other before the trip. Mm -hmm. Some of them had not had class together. And our students coming from SAU, most of them knew each other, they'd had classes before. And even then, um, they kind of bonded. We had students from UALR saying, I wanna hang out with your group <laughs> because I like your students. Mm -hmm. They're nicer, they're friendlier, they mm -hmm. get along. I don't know anybody from my school. Mm -hmm. And we had several students that hung out with us, you know, in the free time when you get to go eat or, or see the city. We had a lot of the students and, and it really shows that um, our students are just a special kind of student. UALR is a, um, a commuter campus. They don't have a lot of the activities mm -hmm. that we have and in the group we had presidents, ambassadors, we had leaders on campus, members of fraternities and sororities, we had um, uh, you know just a, a huge cross-section. Uh, we actually took our homecoming queen and king uh, mm -hmm. from this year on this trip mm -hmm. and um, you know they were they were a great example of our students and you know so it's not just the grades that they make that make them it's their personality, it's mm -hmm. their uh, involvement that make them exceptional students. Mm -hmm. You were speaking of that Euler doesn't really have a lot of activities on their campus, but are you involved in any other activities at SAU? Yes, uh, for several years I've been, I was advisor of Phi Beta Lambda, mm -hmm. and I, I still assist with it. Um, this year our Phi Beta Lambda is, is joined with Students in Free Enterprise to work closely together and uh, Miss Tracy Hughes and Dr. James Clark are the main advisors for mm -hmm. that and um, I assist with that occasionally. Sometimes I still travel with the students. Uh, we also have um, field trips that are not part of classes. For example, we have eight students uh, in April that are going to New York mm -hmm. and I'm going uh, along on that trip. We're visiting um, some companies up there and of course you know the cultural experiences of New York and uh, I work so I work with some student travel student trips and the student organizations. Mm -hmm. That sounds like fun. What all classes do you teach uh, this semester at SAU? Okay uh, now I'm teaching uh, managerial communications which is a junior level uh, course for all business majors. I teach advanced managerial communications, which is for uh, required for management man and management information system majors and is an option for, for other students. And I'm also teaching um, the international studies and field experience course. Mm -hmm. uh, what is your favorite class to teach? Oh, I would have to say that managerial communications is, is well, if, if I couldn't pick 
the international field studies class. That, that would be my favorite because it's such a great experience and great opportunity for the students. But it's not, you know, it's not the typical class and, and uh, not that many students get to take it. But other than that, I would have to say managerial communications. You teach a lot of classes. How exactly did you get into teaching and who inspired you to become? Oh gosh, I've, I've <laughs> wanted to be a teacher as long as I can remember since I was in high school. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I didn't think at the time I would ever teach college, but uh, when I was working on my master's degree uh, at the University of Central Arkansas, uh, we had a situation where um, uh, a professor got reassigned at, at the very last minute and they had two, two courses that needed to be taught and they asked me to step in and I did and I fell in love with teaching college mm -hmm. and ever since then that's what I wanted to do. Mm. So you also attended UC you attended UCA and you also taught there? Yes I did. I attended UCA and as I was working on my master's degree I uh, was a, a graduate assistant and the last semester of that I taught. Uh, at the time, or right when I graduated, a position came open that was was not a, a faculty position, but I was working in the technology department and I had the opportunity to teach two classes each semester while I was doing that. Um, and then uh, through a series of other jobs, uh, I knew people at, at Southern Arkansas University through some associations I had, had been with. And, and uh, one day I got a call uh, asking if I would be interested in teaching full time. And uh, I was out of the state at the time and, and I thought about it. and. I thought I want to move back to Arkansas, close to my family. This is an opportunity to teach full time. That was nine years ago, <laughs> and here I am. Okay. <laughs> um, so, what does uh, the management program contribute to the business program at SAU? Um, the management major is, I, I believe, our largest major in the College of Business, and we actually have two tracks in the management major. There's organizational management, which is for uh, those people who want to be management and uh, managers in companies, uh, human resources, own their own business, um, production and operations and management. And then we also have the management information systems track, which includes uh, several programming courses, uh, courses in database management, systems analysis, and, and design. And that would be for people who want to manage the information systems departments and the information systems of corporations. Mm -hmm. So would you say that there is a high demand for a students with business degrees and specifically management degrees? Oh yes, each year in the, um, the reports that come out about the top, you know, the top jobs, the top uh, highest demanded jobs and the highest paying jobs, um, I, I don't have any statistics handy, but I do know that each year uh, jobs in business, which include accounting and management and management information systems, they're, they're most often found in the top, top 10 uh, highest demanded jobs and highest paying jobs so there are plenty of jobs available mm -hmm. in business. Are there any specific goals that you want your students to reach by the end of the semester? In the in the international studies class? Mm -hmm. Yes we have um, I've, I've really worked hard to make this um, a learning a valuable learning experience for the students. I, I'm, I'm afraid that some years it might have been well you know, and with one or two students, it's hard to do that. They go to Mexico, they have the experiences, but what what do they really mm -hmm. learn about it? And uh, so I've, I've tried to to create those goals and and have the learning experience. So the students do research ahead of time, and they learn about the culture. They learn about the gross national product and the gross domestic product. They learn about um, you know, international trade and international business. They find out that, uh, you know, Mexico participates in more free trade agreements than any other uh, country, you know, and, and those are things that they don't know. Uh, and then we get there and we see um, the culture and we see the way that business works and we see uh, uh, experiences that, that they're never exposed to. Imagine students who have never been on an airplane. Mm -hmm. Okay, <laughs> some students have never been out of Arkansas, Louisiana, and Texas. Wow. Okay, uh -huh. they've not been in a city with five million people, and we go to Guadalajara, Mexico, and it's uh, and, when, and when the students come back, uh, they write a, a report following up about all all of the things that they learned, um, and, and their thoughts about the trip, and and. Um, 
and there's you know guidelines for that of, of you know addressing certain topics and, and goals and, and uh, they do that so mm -hmm. um, why should students uh, major in business and if you do want to major in business why should you come to SAU <laughs> well uh, some people will say if you're not um, running a business you'll be working for someone who is mm -hmm. you know even uh, doctors have to have business you know they, they have to know how to run a business uh, you know in any field that you're in chances are you, you'll be working for a business or, or needing to run your business mm -hmm. and uh, it's just a it's a, a popular high demand field and um, what was the second part of your question? Uh, why should you come to SAU okay. if you want to major in business? Well, uh, that, that's an excellent question. In 2004, Arkansas Business Magazine uh, conducted a survey of its readers, a poll of its readers, and of all the universities in Arkansas, its readers, and, and they had, I believe, over 6,000 voted, voted oh. the SAU College of Business the number one business school in the state of Arkansas. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, if you if you visit our business uh, our business building, you'll see um, many of the awards that we've received. Our mm -hmm. students earn um, awards in their nationwide competitions. We've earned a statewide recognition. Uh, so we are very proud of our business program. Uh, also, a few years ago, uh, we completed a long process to become accredited by AACSB International, which is the premier accrediting agency for colleges and schools of business worldwide. Mm -hmm. And only about 16% of uh, colleges of businesses in the world, not just the United States, in the world, only 16% are accredited by AACSB. And they have a rigorous set of standards that we must meet and uh, follow. And, and it's just, it's, it's like a stamp on our business program that says yes this is a high quality program mm -hmm. and yes you're doing uh, you're doing the right things you're producing qualified graduates uh, and you have a good program and so we have an excellent program uh, someone yesterday just told me that Southern Arkansas University is, is like a well-kept secret um, oh. you know we you know other programs in the university as well uh, I think if more people knew how great mm -hmm. the school was, they would come here. Mm -hmm. um, for those who do want to major in business, um, what scholarships are available? Okay, uh, we have several several of the students who have the, the scholarships based on their ACT scores, mm -hmm. but we also have scholarships available for business majors. We have some uh, scholarships uh, called the Pewterball scholarships that were uh, endowed by um, Mr. Pewterball, who was a uh, who has actually endowed several things at the university and, and each year uh, students are selected to receive uh, a semester of tuition uh, and, and that's usually based on their involvement with student organizations in the College of Business. Mm -hmm. We also have scholarships for each major. Um, so the, the student would, who would be an, an active top uh, student in accounting, in management, in marketing, uh, finance and management information systems, uh, those top students can apply. Mm -hmm. We also have a scholarship in uh, Beta Gamma Sigma, which is the National Honor Society uh, for business students in AACSB accredited colleges of business. And that's a thousand dollar scholarship that students mm -hmm. can apply for. So we have several scholarships that are uh, just for business majors that uh, students can apply for when they're juniors and seniors. We also have non-traditional scholarships and then the other university scholarships like the foundation scholarship and the uh, presidential scholarships and, and the other ones that, that all students are eligible for. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, Professor Conley, we would really like to thank you for being with us today. I'm Jessica Ellison. And I'm Chelsea Sparlock. Thanks for watching.